And the, ash, the, the, the question on the chat is, could you walk us through the best kind of board slash plate to use for a cheese platter, uh, design, color, shape, et cetera? Absolutely, that is part of what we'll go over. And I have, well, are you building one along right now? And that's why you wanna know so that you can pick something. Okay, so um, thank you for the introduction, Catherine. I love Catherine. Um, and it was really exciting to be able to come virtually a little down south in the county to join you all. Um, the printouts that you that came when you registered, one of them has a bunch of tips for um, for shopping and different cheese selection and um, display tips and some um, a lot of good information on here and it's sized so you can print it on one sheet of paper. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. If you want, if I'm talking too fast and getting a little girl, Gilmore girlsy, just tell me to slow down. You can unmute and ask questions. Very laid back. I want you guys to have fun and cheese is fun. And yesterday was National Cheese Lovers Day, which I somehow didn't realize. So we're like, we're just being cool by celebrating one day late. So, um, Brilliant. I also, yeah, I also <laughs> lived in Wisconsin for like 10 years. So, um, I have a soft spot for cheese. So if we want to talk about display first, I'll show you, I'm going to use this giant board just because it makes a good um, for display. But this is something um, that I picked up from the Henkels, the Zwilling Henkels warehouse. It's up in Pleasantville. During normal times, um, they have a warehouse sale every November, like around Thanksgiving, and you can get like crazy good prices on stuff. So I picked this up there. They have a lot of really big boards. You can find stuff at Target. Um, a lot of grocery stores have pretty big um, selections of cutting boards and stuff. You can also use, um, have a couple things that I've used in the past to show you. Any size of cutting board will do. I like using kind of like trays with handles. So like this I picked up from a vintage store. It was pretty inexpensive just something to make it a little easier to carry. And if you're not sure if it's a food safe surface, I would just recommend putting a piece of like parchment paper down on top of it or butcher paper if you have that. You can also use a baking sheet or a, like a casserole dish. It doesn't have to be flat with no sides. I often will use something like this. This is a quarter sheet pan. So it's little um, that if you have a bunch of people coming, you could use a, what most people think of as a regular sheet pan. This is a half sheet pan. So this is just half of that. You can absolutely build right on here. You can use a, a platter, any type of serving platter you have. I mean, really, you can use a plate. You could use um, really anything you can get your hands on that's like a fairly flat surface would be great for building a cheese board. You can even put um, butcher paper or parchment right down on a table. Um, you can put it right on the table and build your board right on a table. And then you don't have to worry about fussing too much and it can kind of be more free form and flow. So anything you have, I like to use neutral colors usually or solid colors versus patterns so that the stuff that's on the board can really kind of show some personality. So that would be my only recommendation. Like if you had a white plate or a black plate um, there's also like slate. I have some in the other room, but uh, they're like thin, heavy pieces of um, like a, they're dark, usually dark black slate. Um, but yeah, even like cutting boards like this, just something little, doesn't have to be anything fancy. So hopefully the stuff on top will take, kind of take over and that'll be what is wowing people. Actually, we so, have a question. Yes. Can you explain what you mean by butcher paper? Butcher. That's the brown. Um, like if you go to a butcher shop, I know they sell it at, I want to say craft stores. And you can start video. It's like a brown paper. Um, you could use wax paper. So something like that. Um, parchment would probably be a little bit better. Just kind of something to protect the surface, um, especially if you're doing it on a table. Something to protect the surface from any oils that are in the cheese. So like this is parchment paper, um, parchment baking sheets. Butcher paper looks very similar to this, but it's a little less um, see-through. So sorry, that's very crinkly. Thank you. Yep, no problem. 
Um, so the first thing I want to show you is just one appetizer that I like putting on cheese boards that always kind of steals the show and they disappear really quickly. I don't know if anybody's making them along, but this is garlicky goat cheese and herb stuffed pepidus. And this is, um, these are what pepidus look like. There are mild and sometimes hot. There's also like cherry peppers, different things that look very similar. So you can use whichever you can find, just be sure you note if you don't wanna like really spicy pepper, get the mild ones. Like my son, he likes these ones. They're not too spicy for him. So we're just gonna get a small bowl and we're gonna mix um, six ounces of goat cheese softened. So this log is 11 ounces. So I'm gonna take a little over half of it and I'm gonna take the other half and just roll it in some cut herbs to add to my cheese board because they don't sell a, I couldn't find a six ounce size goat cheese. Um, you can put whatever herbs you like in this too. And if you don't have fresh, you could use dried. They just tend to be a little stronger. So maybe go with a little bit less. Um, Gray, can you turn it down? Yeah. Um, so again, just sticking this little piece off to the side. Um, I've had the goat cheese sitting out for a little bit, so it's not super, super cold. It just makes it a little easier to mix if you do that. And then I'm gonna chop up some fresh parsley and basil. So about a tablespoon and a half of basil. Um, basil is one of those ingredients that you wanna, you wanna cut it right before you use it because it turns brown really easily. So I'm just gonna pick a couple leaves off. The measurements on this too are very loose. You can kind of eyeball it as you go. Um, and you can always taste the filling and if you think it could use a little more punch, go for it. Um, and then I just use, I like to pat them dry so there's not a bunch of extra moisture in. And I have these, um, they're called unpaper towels. I get them on Etsy, but they're reusable paper towels which are really nice for not having a bunch of kitchen waste. Actually, can um, the participants use dried basil in the recipe? Yeah, yeah, dried basil, I feel like is one of the exceptions where it isn't stronger than fresh. So um, for one and a half tablespoons of fresh, maybe start with a tablespoon of dried and just see if, if, it, if it needs more after. But yeah, you can, you can totally use dried herbs here or no herbs. I mean, honestly, a goat cheese stuffed in a pepidou is delicious by itself too. So just want to cut it up kind of small uh, and then add it right into the bowl with the goat cheese. So this is about one and a half tablespoons of basil and about a tablespoon of parsley. And then I'm going to add about a tablespoon of fresh chives. And if you, if you get irritated with trying to chop chives, you can um, use scissors if you have kitchen scissors. And that's like a, a nice way to kind of cut them without them rolling all over the place. So I bought these ones recently that I'm like super fangirl about because they're, they separate. So they're really easy to clean. I see Hillary's nodding. She might have the same ones. Um, so you can, to you can use these and just snip them right into the bowl into little pieces. And again, about a tablespoon or so. <laughs> All right, so I've got those and then a green onion finely chopped. This one, if you're going to be piping your filling, um, make sure you cut this up pretty small because it can clog the tips, the, especially the white part at the end is pretty um, sturdy and sometimes it can clog the tip of the little piping. I use a bottle, but you can use a Ziploc bag if you have that. So I'm just cutting it up nice and small. Um, and really anything that you like as an appetizer, like anything that you'd have like at a Super Bowl party or you know, at your favorite dinner party, you can put on a cheese board. As long as it doesn't have to be served piping hot, I would say it's pretty good to add to a cheese board, especially bite-sized things or dips like hummus. Um, it's a really good way to kind of stretch the stuff you have, and then you don't have to buy quite as much cheese if you don't if you don't want to, because I know it can get expensive. 
Okay, so right now I've got the herbs, got green onions, parsley, basil, chives, and then I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of fresh lemon zest. If you have a microplane that looks like this, you can use it to get the zest on. And if you wanna see how much you're getting, instead of doing it with the side down, do it with that side up so you can see how much it's collecting. But again, these measurements don't have to be super precise, but something that can help. So about a teaspoon of the lemon zest right in the bowl. And two cloves of garlic. Um, you got a jar from Wegmans and Harrison. Oh, the pepper juice. Yeah, they can be tricky to find sometimes. Um, when olive bars are a thing, I like to, a lot of times you can get them right from the olive bar at the grocery store. And I'll sometimes grab a couple of those and some mixed olives and mushrooms and stuff. And then I can use all those things on my board versus buying individual jars of every single thing. That way you can kind of get a little bit more for your money. And then you don't have like half a jar left of all these different things. I'm using two cloves of garlic and I have this, this thing is, it looks like a cannoli, but it's like silicone. Um, and you just throw them in here with the peel on and you press down and roll. I thought it was gonna be really gimmicky, but my husband got it for me a few years ago and I actually really like it. And the peels just kind of fall right off. So if you have something like this, or even if you have a piece of silicone, that's a great way to do it. Otherwise you just lay your clove down on your cutting board and with the flat edge of your knife, you kind of press and that'll loosen the paper so you can peel it off. So again, these I'm gonna mince pretty small. And everybody who's, who's making these along, are you getting everything in around the same time as me? Or I can talk more cheese while I stall if you need a little bit more time. Um, and I, my family really likes garlic. If you don't, you could totally leave the garlic out. Um, and you could try it with other stuffed cheeses. Honestly, I haven't tried this, but maybe like Borsin, one of those soft cheeses would work. Anything that you can like spoon or pipe into something else. And I haven't, um, I've, I've done this in Pepidus and I've also um, piped it into celery sticks is really nice. It's great, um, like with cucumbers, you can like hollow out a little piece and stuff that in there. Okay, so the next thing is two tablespoons of plain yogurt and then you will mix it together and see what the texture is like before determining if we need a little bit more because you want it to be loose enough that it's pipeable but you don't want it to be super runny. So I like to start a little lower and add more if needed. Um, also make sure different brands of yogurt have very different packaging and sometimes vanilla looks like plain. Do not make that mistake. It would not be very good, I don't think. It's like how um, pumpkin, canned pumpkin and pumpkin pie mix look the same, but they're very not the same. And I made um, curried pumpkin soup once and my father-in-law bought the pumpkin for me. And my husband's like, how much sugar did you put in there? I was like, there's like a teaspoon of honey in this whole pot. He's like, no, it's very sweet. It was, it was honey or it was a, sugar from the pumpkin pie mix. Um, the only other thing in here is going to be a quarter teaspoon of salt and about, I put an eighth of a teaspoon of fresh crack, cracked black pepper. Just put a little bit in, um, not actually measuring an eighth of a teaspoon. And then we're going to mush it all together. Oh, wait, and some of the pepidou liquid, right? Yeah, one and a half teaspoons of, so inside of the brine that's inside of the jar. It's like, it's so good for mixing into things and just adding a little extra flavor. So I put a little bit of that liquid right into the bowl. And then if you find that it needs to be thinner, you can add more pepidou liquid, you can add more yogurt. So we're just kind of smushing everything together. At first it takes a little arm muscle to get it going, but um, it'll get there. 
So while I'm mixing this, um, talking about finding cheese, you don't have to go to a fancy cheese shop. You certainly can. Um, Wegmans is wonderful. Whole Foods has a ton of cheese. Honestly, ShopRite and Stop and Shop have tons. Um, up here, I was mentioning earlier, uh, Second Mouse Cheese Shop in Pleasantville is lovely. They're, um, I think they've been open for about two years now. They have a lot of really great stuff. And if you're trying to do it on a budget, the Wholesale Club is a great resource. I did a big cheese board party for a local place here a couple of years ago. And I bought all the cheese at, at the Wholesale Club. You can buy pretty, like they have good brands and even different types. They have blue cheeses, nice chunks of cheddar. You can get soft cheeses like brie. So it's really easy. And then also the side accompaniments you can get for a pretty good price. So should have the, um, I'm gonna light the little bright there all that distributed, kind of get green flecks throughout. And then you can just taste and see if it tastes like, I think the, the herbs and the amount of garlic in there are good. It's looking a little bit thick for mine. So I'm gonna add a little bit more yogurt. If I wanted it a little spicier, I'd add a little more papadou juice. Um, and then to fill them, the pepidus, you can either use a tiny spoon, like a demi toss spoon, something like one of these little guys. It's easier to pipe it. So if you have a bottle, I'd recommend using that. Otherwise, you can use a Ziploc bag and snip the corner off and just push it into there. If anybody needs me to show you how to do that, I can. Um, Lee, can you talk a little bit about how how um, thick or how liquidy mm -hmm. it should be? So this is, you can see it's pretty stiff, but it's very spreadable. So I want it to be able to, I'm gonna put it in this little, this is a little bottle that I have with a piping tip. I want it to be able to come up out of there. You know, it's, it's kind of like, tooth, like toothpaste a little bit. Um, but way more delicious. And we also have someone who'd like to see the piping with the Ziploc bag. Absolutely, yep. Um, I have a sandwich size bag. You can use a sandwich size or a freezer bag, but what you would do in that case is just open it, add in some of your filling into the bag, not over the edge, and then Made a little bit of a mess there. All right, so you can put all of it in if you're gonna pipe all that way, but you wanna have it kind of push it toward the bottom a little bit. And then you can see this tip right here. Just gonna snip that off kind of low cause you can always make it a, a wider opening. So I'm gonna snip it off down there and then you can see it'll squeeze out a little bit thicker, but the same type of thing as using a bottle. So, I'm just gonna pipe a couple so that you can see, and then we'll get on to the cheese board. Um, and again, you don't feel, don't feel like you need to make any sort of appetizers when you're doing a cheese board, but if you have time and you want to, you can totally, it just kind of adds another level to them. Um, deviled eggs are something that works really nice too on the cheese board. So these are what Peppadu peppers look like. They're like really tiny and cute and they have a nice opening for the filling. So you just put either with your bag or spoon if you want to and just kind of squeeze until it fills up. I like using, sometimes I use a star tip. You just kind of fill it up until it's sticking out a little bit there and then put it into whatever type of container. Uh, like if you want to leave them in the fridge overnight because you're having a party tomorrow, you could put them in a container with a lid that wouldn't touch, so something that's deeper than the pepper. Um, I think I'm gonna use this tray on my board. This is like a vintage celery dish that I got that people always go nuts for, and I, it's one of my favorites. So I'm just gonna lay this on my cheese board. I'll show you. I do have a tiny kitchen, so it takes a lot of shuffling, but um, my board is big like this. 
So I like to kind of do an angle down the middle. So if you have any sort of oval type of container you could put on there. Um, so I'm gonna put this kind of right diagonally in the middle like that. And then I'm gonna load it up with things like these pepadus and I'll put some, um, probably some olives and pickles and stuff like that in there too. So the same thing, if you were doing it with this, a Ziploc, you just kind of squeeze it in there. Really easy. And the filling can be made days in advance as long as it's covered and in the fridge. And then before you go to pipe it, just probably bring it out of the fridge for like 10, 20 minutes to let it soften up a little bit so it's easier to put in there. Um, and like I said, if you get the mild ones, they're not too spicy and my son loves them. And they're usually, these and the deviled eggs are usually the first things to disappear whenever I've got a party with a bunch of different types of appetizers. So I'm gonna do one more and then we'll start in with the cheese. Um, one of the things I like doing when I'm buying cheese is to try to pick different colors, textures, different milks if I can, um, just to kind of keep things interesting. You can see I got, you can see how that would be pretty with a whole full platter of them. So we have a question about how long do the peppers uh, last? So let's see, these, these say 3-24-22, so that's next year. And I've had these, I've had these for a couple months and they're still fine in the um, liquid. I am not the FDA, but they last quite a while. It's, it's, they're pickled in there. So yeah, they, I don't think you have to worry too much. But again, if you're worried about not using a whole container, if you have somewhere that's got an olive bar, you can just put, you know, like 10 or so into an olive bar container and use that. Um, similarly, these little peppers, um, this one's called sweet mini peppers. They are also called sweetie drop peppers and they're so cute and I love the little burst of color they give on a board. They look like little teardrops. They're really, really cute. They have kind of a lot of seeds in them, but those are another fun. It's pretty much the same flavor as a pepadu. Um, so normally when I'm looking at the cheeses I'm gonna include, I'm looking for shapes, textures and colors. So I have one, it's like a partial, it's just a Cabot extra sharp. Pretty much everybody pretty much likes sharp cheddar cheese or some sort of cheddar cheese. And I like this because you can cut it into triangles, rectangles, squares. Um, and this is just from the regular grocery store. It's nothing super fancy. So I can like, you know, kind of splurge on other cheeses. I'm just gonna wipe my board. When I'm cutting cheese for boards, I like to start with the least kind of fragrant or potent type of cheese first. That way my cutting board doesn't get all the flavors from like a funky blue cheese. And then I have to cut like a really mild brie on it or something like that. So I like to cut them on a separate cutting board than where I'm displaying because it kind of makes it messy and you know it's easier to kind of figure out where you want to position it later without just looking for room to cut. My kids are eating off the cheese off the board that's why no video. I'm glad they enjoy it that's awesome. Um, so my first thing I'm going to cut is this cheddar and I'm just going to slice off a chunk of it. I like using um, odd numbers of cheese often because uh, visually three looks nice, five looks nice. If it's very even, it can look a little like matchy, but it's okay if you do like, there's no actual rules. It's just preferences and kind of finding out what, what you like and what works for you. So I took this rectangle and I cut it into two triangles and then I'm gonna slice those and kind of stagger them. Just, it makes it a little more interesting than your normal block of cheddar. So just a little triangle. Um, 
you could also you could totally do a bunch of types of cheddar i had to take a couple cheddars out of my shopping cart the other day because i'm like well i already have i think i have two two different types of cheddar there's there's no rule that says you have to have a blue a brie a cheddar grapes i know a lot of people think there's too many grapes on cutting boards. I just, I honestly use it as a way to clean out stuff that's in my produce drawer sometimes or my snack cabinet because um, we have a lot of snacks in the house for my son and for me. <laughs> um, so I'll take the cheese sometimes like this and I'll alternate. So you've got one one way and one the other way. And I'll do my best at the end of class to like lift the board up so you can see it. But I'll post a, I'll post a photo on Instagram later too. I'm over there at Big Flavors so you guys can see like what we came up with. And just kind of doing something like that when it's on the board, it's going to be a little more interesting. So I'm just going to kind of stagger these around. Um, if you're doing this for a party, it's kind of nice to keep all the same types of cheeses together. So like say I, I wanted to have just some of the cheddar up, but I wanted to monitor and see if we need to add some more later. It's easy to look where the cheddar is and be like, oh, that's running low. Let me go throw some more on there. Not that we're having really big parties right now, but um, so here, let's see if I can show you easily. So you got like just a little different than a pile of cubes of cheddar. I also saw an article where people were like, it's like sacrilege to cut cheddar into cubes because it looks like what you get at the grocery store. And I'm like, yeah, but it's still delicious. So some cheeses taste different when they're cut into different shapes because of the way it hits your mouth too. Um, all right, the next cheese, I'm gonna take the rest of my goat cheese. I'm gonna cut up a little bit more of the herbs. Do I have some more? I have the chives. I'm just gonna roll it in chives and, uh, maybe some nuts i think that would be good uh you can also do like an herbed paprika Ooh, you know what i have trader joe's is one of my favorite places to find things for cheese boards because they have really good snacks they actually have awesome cheeses and some things like marcona almonds that are really expensive they have at a pretty good price i have these mesquite smoked almonds this is like one of my favorite snacks I'm going to chop some up and roll the goat cheese in that and chives. And I think it'll be good. I don't know. Like the individual components are very good. I don't see how it could be that bad. But you can you could roll them in. You could cut up some dried cranberries or apricots, walnuts, Marcona almonds. I got Costco. Yes, that is a great place to get them. I, I have a BJ's membership, not Costco, but I definitely buy nuts from there a lot, it's so much a better price. And actually BJ's has this brand of um, dates that are really, really plump. And th those are great on a cheese board too. They are so good and they're so much less expensive. Um, See, so yeah, I'm just kind of cutting this into smallish pieces. You could do any fresh herbs you like, rosemary. You could uh, add a little like smoked paprika or something if you wanted not with the smoky almonds, but um, so I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna cut up these chives. I'm just gonna mix them together and roll it. You could even, if you wanted to like do something colorful and different, you could split some chopped herbs, some chopped nuts and some chopped dried fruit. Take little bits of the goat cheese, like roll balls of them and do some in the green, some in the brown, some in the red. I think that would be really pretty. So I'm all about experimenting. I even got my son, we, we do the pro bite. So whatever combination like, oh, this cheese with a little of this jam and this cracker and this, this salami, like that's the pro bite, like that's the best bite. So we're always looking for that. So that's just, I mean, that's the rest of the cheese log that we were using for the other recipe anyway, we already had it, it's not, terrible to have more than one goat cheese on a board. Um, and then I'm just gonna find a little place to nestle it. If I have bigger cheeses, like um, this is one of my favorites and I didn't realize until today that I accidentally got the truffle variety, but I'm pleasantly surprised about that. Um, Dorothy, Dorothy's Creamery, is it Creamery? Yeah, 
Door Three's Creamery. This is from Illinois. I love these because it's like a flower shape. I got this from DeChico. I don't know if you could, if you have those down by you. This was DeChico and Sons. But it's a blue meringue cheese. So sitting out was really nice for Oh my gosh, it does smell like truffles. So it's really cute. It's like a little flower. If you want to get like crazy, I wouldn't do this with the truffle one, but you could take a knife and cut through this way. Just cut off the very top portion. Um, if you're gonna do this, I think you need to freeze it for a couple minutes first and use a cookie cutter to cut out like a little heart out of the top and you can spread a little jam or something on and then put it back on so it's kind of like, it's cute. It's very cute with brie or like camembert. Um, but so this cheese is really lovely. And ones that have a really pretty shape out of the package, I like to try to keep, but I'll cut just like a little bit. Let me, let me do this for you guys so we can look inside together because I've never actually got this one. Oh yeah, so that one's got some truffles in it. So I'll probably cut maybe like half of another kind of petal off of this just to kind of let people know like it's okay to cut this and um, serve it with a knife in it. I think, oh yeah, see like, uh, see how like creamy that is? So that's one reason to leave it sitting out for a few. So I'm gonna take this on the board and I don't know, can you see this? I can't tell, yeah, kind of. Put it here and I'm just gonna put these couple cut pieces kind of falling out of it a little bit. And then it's like, a, oh, that's why I can't tell too much. Um, because that'll give you a good overhead view later, but. Um, and then at this point, I'm gonna take some little bowls. I like putting any sort of ramekins. You could use like shot glasses, um, little jam jars, just to hold some of the things that would roll a little more and just kind of place them around the board. Um, things like those are good. I have this little dish that I really like putting honey in. And then if you get like a little honey dipper or a little spoon to put in there, if people want to add a little sweet to their boards. Um, Cause as much as I love this honey jar, I don't want people dipping it in cheese and then putting it back in and kind of contaminating the whole, the whole honey. Um, so I'll just pour some into here. And then I like serving it with some sort of utensil. Sorry, my towel keeps flying off here. So like I said, either a little spoon or this, and it's nice because you can just drizzle it on top of your cheese. And these things are really, really inexpensive. Um, so sometimes you can put things like if the honey would make sense with one specific type of cheese, I think it would actually be really good with this Humboldt fog. So I might try to like plan out, all right, there's room for the Humboldt fog here. So let me put the honey kind of close to it. Um, this is one of my very favorites from Cypress Grove. You can see it's a, it's a triple cream. See, um, it's an elegant soft surface ripened cheese. The texture is creamy and luscious with a subtle tangy flavor. Um, each handcrafted wheel features a ribbon of edible vegetable ash. That's what the color is. Um, un, along its center and a coating of ash under its exterior to give it a distinct cake-like appearance. So they recommend pairing it on a spinach salad with spinach, apple, mandarin oranges, walnuts, cranberries, and red bell peppers with raspberry balsamic vinaigrette. I like the way it looks when sliced. So this is another one. I'm just gonna do like a couple slices and then set it on there. And I've just been kind of wiping my knife off in between cheeses so I don't have the flavors from them kind of mixing. Actually, we have a question about how long uh, would the goat cheese um, uh, for the peppers last? The mix? You have the extra, mix. the mix. Yeah, if you have extra. Yeah. I, my rule of thumb, again, I'm not the FDA, but my rule of thumb for stuff like that is like about a week. Um, if I, unless there's something super perishable in there. And as long as like, if you're stuffing your peppers and then you have some extra, put it in the fridge. Don't like leave it sit out for four hours and then put it in the fridge. But I'd say about a week. 
I haven't tried freezing it, but I wonder if that would work, like if you could make it in advance, because I know there's this one recipe that I have for a gorgonzola cheese torta type of thing, and you mix like gorgonzola and cream cheese, and you do layers of herbs and cranberries and um, all sorts of stuff, and then you sprinkle almonds on top, and that you can freeze, so I think you might, you might be able to freeze it. Thank you. Um, you're very welcome. So this is, I mean, I'm a sucker for like a really soft, creamy cheese. Um, where did you, this cheese is called Humboldt Fog. It's from Cypress Grove. They have a lot of really great cheeses. I got this from DeChico and Sons in Millwood. Um, I've definitely seen it at uh, Whole Foods, um, Wegmans. Um, this one is a very deep piece actually. So the cut isn't looking amazing. Let me try a serrated knife. They have a bunch of really fun ones. They have one called Bermuda Triangle that's a triple cream. It's got the ash or the bloomy rind on all three sides. And I was at the fancy food show at the Javits Center one year and they were sprinkling turbinado like raw sugar on it. And then they brulee it with a blowtorch and then you dipped. Oh my God, it was so good. So oh, Cypress Grove cheeses. Yeah. Um, so this is, I'm just going to have like a couple slices. This is seeming a little unwieldy. And that's the other thing, like cheese is unpredictable. Sometimes it wants to do its own thing. And I've been able to cut it easily in the past today. It's not happening. That's all right. And, and, and what was this specific name of this cheese? I'm sorry. I'm going to put it. In no, 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 it's fine. Humboldt. Um, I'll put it in there. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, no problem. Yeah. That's one of my, I mean, I have a lot of favorites, but um, Humboldt Fog. Um, they have one also called Truffle Tremor that's similar to this. Um, okay, the other cheese, I have one other cheese. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I've never tried this. I don't know if it's going to be any good. It's, it scares me only a small bit, which I feel like that's sometimes how you find the best cheeses. Um, I bought a Cypress Grove cream lime lamb chopper from Fresh Direct. Ooh, I don't, I don't think I've, I don't know if I've had that one. Um, they have like a sergeant, they have a whole series of ones that are goat cheeses named with like Sergeant Pepper, Purple Haze, like a bunch of kind of like 60s. Um, I have a regular square block. How can I cut it to make it more appealing? You can do, like I was saying with these triangles, you could do um, just long thin strips. Like you could cut that square into rectangles. Um, certain types of cheese, depending on what type of cheese you're talking, like I'll show you with a piece of Parmesan. Um, not everybody thinks to put Parmesan on a cheese board, but my family really enjoys it. Um, and I store them, I have, if you're looking to store like nice cheeses, Formaticum, they make a cheese storage paper and it's, they come in sheets or bags and you can kind of cut it to size. And then when you seal it, it's like what they use in the cheese shops. You can write the type of cheese and uh, what type of milk of the date if you want, but it helps keep like the bad moisture away it really does. I thought it was kind of some hype, but it, it did work. We use the Parmesan a lot. So this one's kind of disintegrating. We wrote Parm on it months ago. Um, so with hard cheeses, I think this would work with like a Gruyere, which sometimes comes in a block. You can take the cheese, get a clean knife, take the point of your knife, stick it in a little bit and twist and you'll get like a chunk. And if you've never eaten a chunk of Parmesan, it's really good, <laughs> really, really good. So you can just kind of like do a couple little chunks. And then if you want on your board, you can leave a knife in it so people know like, hey, here's the crumbly cheese and that's how you get the crumbles. Um, again, it depends on your crowd. If it's people who can be trusted to <laughs> cut their own. Um, but yeah, even, you know, even this, I'll might, I might put this in one of these little dishes, just crumble it up. So you can get like all these different shapes and sizes. So you got some in the waiting room. Um, so yeah, there's, I mean, really any type of shape you want to try. There's also cheese cutters like this, which I don't use very often. I tend to forget I have it, but it's, this is for like picking up the cheese, but this little piece here, you run it down 
it makes these like really thin slices. So you could do that. That would be like an interesting way. I just feel like these might dry out a little fast on a board, but if you're making a grilled cheese, like that would be really great. Um, okay. So, oh, so this cheese that I got that I'm maybe a little scared of is from Deer Creek. It's called the dough. Um, specialty cheddar cheese. It won a silver medal in the International Cheese Awards. So it is specialty cheddar cheese infused with Madagascar bourbon, uh, bourbon vanilla. So I'm thinking it might be good with like some strawberries or something like that. So I've never tried this one, but for you, it doesn't smell like a ton next to all these other cheeses I have, but you can kind of see there's like flecks of bourbon. <laughs> That's the other thing. If um, your family comes home while you're making a cheese board, it might not necessarily smell great because cheese is a little funky. Um, but this, like I just cut a piece off and then I'm just gonna cut like little kind of smallish rectangles and then I'm just gonna pile them. And I'm going to Actually, taste it. Yeah. There's a question about soft cheeses. How, uh, how do you have any recommendations for how to display the softer cheeses like brie that already come in a wedge? Do you just um, leave it or do you cut it? So you can, hmm, the ones that are in a wedge, that's a little tricky. I would say a lot of times they look nice as a wedge and you can just, you can surround them with like some fresh herbs. You could do like I was talking about with this one where you could slice off the top and cut a little shape out of it or you could put like little sprigs of rosemary on top like just something small and kind of delicate um yeah I think kind of sometimes having those like pieces looks nice um like in their own shape let me see if I can show this without spilling too much this is so far got just like a couple piles of cheese we got some empty bowls or ramekins um this little diagonal piece i'm gonna throw in some um i've got artichoke hearts i really like adding those if you have any like half jars of pickles and stuff like honestly i've sometimes i put together it's like a medley of olives but it's like i had like 10 of these olives left and a couple of these and it just you put them there and it in color order and it looks intentional and you know, it's a good way to clean out the fridge or like I have, um, oh, is this childproof? <laughs> Maybe I can't open this one. Well, I've got these cornerstones. That's one of the things that I really like. This, not particularly this brand I don't love. Um, I'll show you actually. These ones I love from, uh, you just get them at Stop and Shop usually. Um, these are nice because they're smaller than like a normal dill pickle. They're like, they're really cute in, in a spread. And again, things like this, I would either pile up in a tray, in a little ramekin, especially because these have brine and you don't want it to kind of get all over everything else. The one, the main thing that I like to be sure to put in a container on a board is something like that rolls like olives because you don't want to be bringing it to the table and then olives all over the floor. Um, so I'll put some of those in there. Uh, I have, um, I just wanted to show you this container. I like getting the bigger jar of this fig spread, but I kept this little container and I keep rinsing it out and adding more to it because it's really cute size for a cheese board, like to put on there with a little tiny spoon. Um, fig spread is a really nice, sweet counterpart. I'm going to add, uh, I got this in a little sampler, Girl Meets Dirt. They have a bunch of different fun preserves. So this one is Orcas Pear with Bay. They're spoon preserves. And this came in a little multi-pack at the cheese shop that I went to. So you can put little things like this right on the board in the jar. Just throw a spoon in there. These are really nice. The flavors are really fun in this, but you could just use strawberry preserves you know you don't have to get like crazy fancy um let's see tomatoes like i have some cherry tomatoes so i'll just like take some of those rinse them off throw them in there anytime i have some veggies that are looking a little 
like they need to be used if you throw them on a snack board and it's like fun. So put some of those in there. I've got um, a bunch of fun, like different nuts. I showed you the mesquite almonds. The other one that I like from Trader Joe's, that's a nice sweet salty. My husband opened the wrong side of this. So it's upside down. There was a resealable thing here. Um, these are sesame honey almonds. So they like have sesame seeds kind of glued onto them with honey. And that's a really nice, like sweet and salty thing to add. I'm gonna put those in a little jar. Um, a lot of times I'll go with white for on the board if I have a lot of colorful stuff, but you could totally, like these are um, some little ramekins that I got from Stop and Shop of different sizes. They're Corningware, I think Corningware, yeah. They have different sizes. So you could add a little color that way, especially if you find yourself getting like all white cheeses and you wanna kinda add a little something different. A lot of these things I had gotten from Pier 1, which is no longer, but just some like interesting shaped um, ramekins. This one is uh, filled with little spoons and stuff, but it's a fun shape. Um, and usually like buying one piece like that is pretty cheap. And then once you have it, you have it. Um, and I repurposed demi toss spoons for all of the little spoon bowl items. I'll use either cocktail picks like these for people. Um, sometimes I'll put in one of these, I'll stack a bunch of cocktail picks. And these little guys, they have little characters, just so you know which one is yours. Um, sometimes I'll do those in a container. But again, that's for when we're having people over and whatever. But you can always keep extra utensils like in something right on your board if you want. Um, I just like to, if I'm doing that, I'll put another empty one nearby and let people know it's for like dirty ones same with like olive pits if you want to put a little um, container for the pits next to it put one olive pit in it so people know this is the one for the pits not for the fresh ones um one oh yeah these are truffle marcona almonds from trader joe's those are great what are your thoughts on very different cheeses on the board for example i saw buffalo cheddar i almost bought a buffalo cheddar for today that's so funny i've never tried it Thought it would taste good, but not sure it would vibe with my blue cheese. Okay, first of all, buffalo and blue cheese together is wonderful. But um, buffalo, blue cheese, truffle goat, brie and gouda. I would say like have one, maybe two, depending on how picky your guests are. Safe cheeses, like something kind of mild. And then go for it. I mean, go for some fun stuff. Because like I said, that's like sometimes you find your new favorites that way, you know? Um, I, if I had rosemary outside, I would take some little rosemary sprigs and tuck them in. It kind of makes things a little festive. Um, and then my family eats meat. So I like to put on some salami and prosciutto. And instead of just kind of plopping them down, I tend to, for salami, I like to fold them in half and then in half again. And then I just do a bunch of those and kind of stack them together. Um, some people, if you make it flow down, like how I have this centerpiece that's diagonal, you could do that with salami. Some people call it a salami river. If you make it flow like, like a river through your board, which honestly is very tranquil to me. Um, but yeah, if you just stack them kind of like that, you get some nice movement and color. Um, there are also some really great uh, non-meat meat looking things like um I have this like half I don't know it's a salami made out of figs I have like half of it here I'm just gonna set this salami down for now um they have like different flavored salamis made out of figs so you can get something you could cut coins out of it that looks like salami but it's vegan if you're looking for something like meaty looking that's not um, oh, this is the best. Sorry. This is, oh, 100% plant based. I think it's like St. Hellenic Foods or something like that. Um, I've seen them in several stores. But once I have my main items down, I'm just kind of filling space. Uh, and you don't have to fill every square inch of your board. You certainly can. Um, but I just kind of tuck things in until 
it looks sufficiently full. And then um, crackers, there's a couple different, I like having more than one type of cracker. And it's a good way to use partial, again, partial boxes of crackers if you have them at home. So like I have some of these um, cracked pepper water crackers. So I'll scatter a couple of those on and a couple of some others that are different shapes to kind of make it look like some, some nice movements in, in there. Um, and then a lot of times too, you don't want to overwhelm the board with crackers. So you have what's called a cracker sidecar. It's just like another plate or basket with extra crackers in them. Um, and also aside from just crackers, um, toasted bread, like if you have a baguette and you slice it on an angle and toast it in the oven, that's a really nice addition. Um, just to have, you know, options for people. Actually, we have a question about in COVID times, how do you arrange toothpicks or mini forks, etc., so that people don't have their hands on the cheeses? Yeah, I would, I mean, I wouldn't, um, but I, you could make individual smaller boards for people. You could have like just a plate of, just a plate of like cheddar cheese and a plate of like the different components kind of and have serving utensils for each so people could take them, put them on their own plates and then go sit and eat them. Um, I don't really know a great solution for that, honestly, because it's so, like, there's so much unknown about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you have a utensil for everything and you're really like making sure people are washing their hands, I mean, I guess, I don't know. Sorry if that was like a non answer. I feel like that's a really like individual on an individual basis type of question for like whatever you're comfortable with. But I guess it's like for any type of food. I mean, cause it's kind of like a potluck, right? Um, yeah, I'm not sure of like the best way to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, because if everybody has their own pick, but they're eating with it, you wouldn't want to do that. So if there was separate serving things for each item, maybe. Um, I usually like adding dried apricots to my board because I find they go really nicely with a lot of different things. Um, but I don't know where mine went. So I've got some fresh fruit. I like berries. You can do pears, apples. Um, I got some raspberries. Um, this I bought a while ago, the quince paste. And it's kind of like um, in between a jam and a dried fruit. So it didn't open very well. You can cut like little cubes of this sweet paste and they make a pretty stack also. tricky to get into this one. Um, you can see it's like a really firm paste and you can slice it. So you can slice different um, shapes out of it. Let's see if I can pull one out. And you can spread that right on a cracker. I'm going to make it smaller than this, but that's kind of a fun different one. And this will last a while in the refrigerator if you just use a little bit of it. Um, I not everybody likes fresh veggies on there. I, I do, I like, think it's a nice kind of palate cleanser. Um, and like I said, a lot of the veggies are nice stuffed with this goat cheese mixture. So I might do, um, I have celery. I've got um, some little mini bell peppers. Those are nice if you slice them in half and you can stuff them or you can just slice really thin strips and like kind of scatter them throughout. Um, might just cut a couple. And Ashley, we have a question about how you would display and serve prosciutto on the board. Oh, I will show you in a moment because I have some. Um, that is, I, I like kind of tearing it apart and making like little ribbons out of it. So just cut these guys open. Actually, I think I'll do strips. Um, one other thing like with uh, vegetables, like a cucumber, you could do coins, you can do strips, you can do both, put some in different places 
and it's just like you know different ways of doing the same vegetable in more than one way um, you could do that with cheese too but i think people might think it was two different types of cheeses if you did that so i've got some slices of bell pepper just kind of stick them around all right prosciutto it's one of my favorite things because you can pile it really nice and high if you want and you can really use it as a place filler So I tend to not worry if it rips because we're going to intentionally rip it. So you take the slice and you kind of tear it into multiple pieces and then um, find a good way to show that. Well, you can make a little pile. Pieces are just falling off of this package. Um, kind of stripping it into smaller pieces and then laying them down gently and it kind of just piles up i don't know if i can't my name is over my um my picture so i can't tell if that's showing but you can just do a little pile of ribbons and i'm gonna kind of let's see if i can get you guys a better view of this over here it's like right in the center or right there i'm gonna kind of wrap it around that bowl kind of like encase it in <laughs> prosciutto um and yeah this can absolutely be dinner you don't have to like do it as an appetizer course because you certainly can add enough to here to do uh make it as a whole meal um i sometimes will do hummus you can do store-bought or homemade you don't have to make everything um, like hummus and some baba ganoush or any type of things like that that you can buy and just put in little dishes cut up some pita um, triangles and then you have kind of like a middle eastern snack board that'd be kind of nice i've done a brunch one before um, with like a big a big bowl of yogurt and then little mini croissants and granola and fruit. Um, so just gonna wrap that around. And then now that I have a good amount of stuff on here, I'm gonna start tucking crackers and just like filling space. So oh, I am gonna slice up an apple though. I like apples and pears and things like those shapes cause you can fan them out and really fill up some space and make them look pretty. So I'm just gonna kind of thinly slice it. Then we had a question about citrus. Do you have any feelings about that on the cheese? Oh, yes, absolutely. I really like doing something like clementines and I'll, you can put like, if you get the ones that have still the little greens on them, they're really pretty. And you could put a couple whole ones there and then peel some so that people don't have to feel like they have to peel their own. Um, I would scatter some of the segments throughout and then um, pomegranate. Uh, arrows or seeds those are really nice to add also and they look they add a nice pop of color I feel like especially in the um, winter they look really nice um, but yeah I mean I don't think anything is really off limits I think people who tell you to limit yourself on your cheese board are missing out <laughs> um, but yeah I've definitely done citrus um, and the peels honestly like if you can peel it off in a fairly big piece you could even use that and hold some of the pieces that you peeled inside of it um, it's like its own serving utensil um let's see what else can i'm going to sprinkle some other crackers on here oh wait and i'm going to show you i got a motion detector faucet um i really like these two some places call them sesame sticks these are called oat bran sticks they're just like little it's like different than a cracker they're fun shapes they're really nice to snack on I like adding those also. Throw those there. Um, things like strawberries, I like doing some whole and then some cut up or sliced. Um, and again, you can just use it to fill space wherever you find 
space. I like leaving the greens on. So like you have something like this laying in a pile on your board, it looks really nice. Um, I guess this is like the ultimate option or example of you eat with your eyes first. Cause like even something as boring as, I don't know, a bell pepper, it can be interesting. It just depends on how you present it. So, and then just kind of flipping when I'm displaying like the strawberries, I'll have some skin side up, some cut side up, some that are like in quarters and just pile things near each other. Um, does anybody have any other questions specifically about cheese boards or cooking classes or um, how to get your kids <laughs> excited about doing stuff in the kitchen? Because um, I know for me getting my having my son help pick out the things to go on a board like this or even just the act of serving it on a board gets him excited to eat new things. Um, where do you put the cheese knives? So I like to wait until um, these are charcoal crackers, by the way. It sounds crazy. They kind of taste like shortbread, like not sweet. I'm very into them. Um, cheese knives, I like to wait until I set the, I set the board on the table and then I will take a knife, let's see, I have some little mini ones. So like this the clover kind of flower shaped one we know needs to be sliced. So I'll take the knife and I'll just kind of stick it in the cheese wedge so people know that they can use it for that one and they're not like spreading a bunch of cheese on other types of cheese. Things that are just cut up into individual pieces don't really need knives, but you could put a pick on there if you wanted to. Um, if you don't want to use like a crazy specialty one, if you have ones in your house for like crab, the, like crab picker things, you can use those um, and just stick it right in the cheese. And then hopefully that'll lead people to realize to pick it up with that instead of their fingers. Um, and I, anything that needs to be picked up, if you do a knife that's got a little point like this, they can use that to stab the pieces and pick them up. So I guess I'll put this one with cheese. Um, and then some of the other crackers I really like are this fire hook. They're a fun shape too, and they stay fresh for a long time inside of these containers. So you can either leave them on whole or you can kind of break them into smaller pieces. Do I ever add chocolate chunks? Yeah. You can totally do like a sweet and savory thing. Um, I know dark chocolate works really nicely with a lot of cheeses. Um, yeah, there is um, these like cocoa dusted kind of like corn nuts that I got from a cheese shop once that were really, really good. I can't find them anymore though, but there's all sorts of fun things. Um, chocolate covered raisins could be fun. Really anything that you wonder if it would work, just like try it, just put a little bit of it on there. Approximately how long do soft versus hard cheeses last in the refrigerator? Um, I think it totally depends. And honestly, look when you're buying your cheeses, look at the dates because I encountered a couple when I was shopping two days ago that were like either already expired or like in three days were gonna expire. So I feel like you have to kind of be vigilant about watching for that. Um, Wes, I have, again, like cleaning out your pantry. I've got like a partial container of nuts. These are sweet Oregon hazelnuts with honey and rosemary. And it's like, this would be sad to put out on a table, but if you put it in a little open spot here, it completely looks intentional. Um, yeah, let me see if I can give you at all a good view of that. And I, like I said, I'll post on social media and I'll send it over to Catherine. Um, but yeah, just kind of tucking things in spaces I kind of mixing up the placement of colors is always fun. If it's ever looking like very brown in one area, just like throw in something with a little color, pop a strawberry in the corner and it's suddenly it brightens it up a little bit. Um, I love all the colors. Thank you. Yeah, I, I love, and it's fun too when you're shopping to be like, 
Well, I already have a bunch of white stuff. Let me add a little bit of, of orange or yellow. Um, let me, I'm gonna taste this vanilla one and let you guys know. It's very mild. That's interesting. I wonder what it would pair well with. Probably like a little bit of a salty cracker. Yeah, it says mellow and a woody finish. I don't know about that, but I think it would be good with some fruit, maybe a mild cracker. Um, the one other note I would say when you're getting crackers, get, if you want to get some fun flavored ones, like there's ones with dried figs and rosemary that are really, really good. Um, also offer plainish ones so that the flavor of the cracker doesn't overpower the flavor of the cheese. Um, did I miss anybody else's question? I think so. Um, if you are looking for recipes online, I have a food and recipe site, Big Flavors from a Tiny Kitchen. Um, it's at bigflavorstinykitchen.com. Oh, beautiful. That looks great. If you take a picture, tag me on, on social at Big Flavors. I would love to see a photo. That's beautiful. Very nice. Um, I have also, I have, well, I have thousands of recipes on my side. I've been doing it since 2006. And Actually, I have- can you type your site into the mm -hmm. app? Yep. And also tell us where to look for you on social media. Okay, so Big Flavors, oops, tinykitchen.com. And then, um, at Big Flavors everywhere except Twitter is at Big Flavors blog. Um, I'm on Instagram a lot just because it's visual. I went to school for art. I love um, pictures of things. Um, and I also, I teach um, online cooking classes. I have, I have two coming up. One is this coming Sunday at one for, it's a kid's cooking class. We're making sweet corn muffins. And then I have on Friday, February 19th at 6 p.m., a comfort food class. We're making skillet lasagna. So it's like a one pot lasagna. You can use, I like using lamb with it, but you can use beef, lamb, turkey. You can use Beyond Meat if you want to go um, plant-based. And it's, I tried it that way and it's really, really good also. Um, we're making that garlic bread and a creamy balsamic vinaigrette. It's one of my favorite classes. It's a really good meal. Um, and one pot meals are a very nice option these days. And also guys, Ashley will be back at the Rye Library in April doing one of hopefully many programs that we're calling Appy Hour. So she'll be doing appetizers. Appetizer, <laughs> That's April think, 26. Yeah, and I think that one we're doing, which two are we doing? Stuffed mushrooms? Mushrooms and- um, No mayo devil eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there's tons of stuff. You know, normally this class is a little bit different than my normal classes where we're like cooking together because it's a lot of arranging, but let me try one more time to see if I can get you a decent view. I'll do like the Vanna spin. And if you're not talking while you're putting it together, it does come together quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if you ever have any cooking questions or looking for suggestions, I'm happy to help. I'm very accessible via social media. And um, thank you so much for joining me. Like, oh yeah, I was almost drinking out of this before too my friend got me for christmas <laughs> thank you so much thank you guys it was so nice to meet you all and i hope to see you online and one day in person again but a couple more messages for you ashley too. yes i like to share a board but we've been eating much yeah the peppers are tasty good 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 i'm so glad and like i said try stuffing that filling into other things too it's like it would be great in a bell pepper um mine was eaten by my kids good I'm not, a, I've had people post pictures of my recipes and it's literally like the plate with the fork and a knife because they, they like housed it before <laughs> and I'm like, it's a compliment, right? You know, <laughs> um, I'm so glad you guys are awesome. And, and, and again, if you ever want to cook along with me, I, it's always a lot of fun and very laid back. I, I don't get like, <laughs> you got a, Jennifer's got an empty plate there. <laughs> Substituted cream cheese. Yes, that would work really well. So would um, yeah, any, any like <laughs> lots of families enjoying these cheese boards. I'm so <laughs> glad. Yeah, my son enjoys them too. He's gonna. We got him Domino's for dinner, but I'm gonna see if he wants a little. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you all for joining us.
And thank you, Ashley. And we'll see you again in April. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Oh, Catherine, I wish I could share this with you. <laughs> I know.